Page 235, any questions from the homework you want me to go over? The homework that I said was hugely crucial and important. Now, I gave you a lot. Hopefully you found though it started to get fairly repetitive or fairly mundane. I hope so. I think I said to you last day my goal was that it becomes uh, boring for you. And, or you, Then that's, that's where we should be at. Any of these? Any of these? Any of these? Yeah. I heard G and H. Three G and H? Love to. Three G. 180 degrees. Right there. What's the reference angle, do you think? Zero. Yep. Uh, H. Negative 270 degrees. New. Yeah. Right there, what's the reference angle? Uh, no, remember reference angle is either measured there or there in this case because it's the same distance either direction, but 90. It's always measured to the closest x-axis. In this case, both x-axes are the same distance away, but uh, it has a reference angle of 90. Weird ones, I know. We don't use those ones very often. Is that okay? Excellent. Any others? Then turn to lesson three. Combine today with Monday's lesson, and I said to you that that really, for the next four, three, well, for the next month and a half, I'm not going to be teaching you anything new after that. I'm going to be simply showing you different ways to use what you learned two days, two classes ago, last class, today, and Monday. Today is applications of reference angles and the cast rule. And for those of you that were away last day, here is a quick explanation of what we meant by reference angles. We said that the reference angle, if you were in this quadrant, that was your reference angle. If you were in this quadrant, that was the reference angle. If you were in this quadrant, that was the reference angle. If you were in this quadrant, that was the reference angle. You guys have lines there, do you not? Yeah, for some reason, mine vanished. And there is no uh, hard rule to calculate the reference angle. If you're in this quadrant, the reference angle is your terminal angle. Here, in this quadrant, it's uh, 180 minus the reference angle gives you the rotation angle. Or Here, it's uh, rotation angle is 180 plus the reference angle. Here, it's uh, 360 minus the reference angle gives you the rotation angle. I actually don't memorize those. Holly, when I do the sketch, I can just eyeball it and realize, oh, I'm here. It's going to be the that 360 minus gives me that. Okay. So it says memorize. Uh, I can figure it out by drawing a picture. We also introduced the cast rule. Cosine is positive. All of them are positive. Only sine is positive, along with cosecant. And tangent and cotangent are positive. Oh, and I guess secant is positive down there because secant goes with cosine. Where do we use this? Why do we need this? Why am I doing such a big song and dance about this? Turn the page. And get out your calculator. On your calculator, can you find for me the tangent of 40 degrees and give it to me to five decimal places, please? Amanda, what'd you get? 0 0.83909. Is that right? Is that right? I'm seeing people look puzzled. Yes? No? What's after the nine? Oh, can you round off properly, Amanda? My physics kids were all going round off properly. Is it? Is it that? Yes, okay. Now that also means if I told you that the tangent of some mystery angle was 0 0.83910, you should be able to find the angle by going second function 0 0.83910 can you try that does that give you your 40 degrees close 
we've rounded off. It's not exactly 40, but uh, close. Yes? Um, if I say uh, the cosine of 82 degrees is, can you find the cosine of 82 degrees to five decimal places? Andrew, what'd you get? Point one three nine two to five decimal places. That should mean that if I told you that the cosine of some angle was point one three nine one seven, you should be able to go shift cos of that and does that give you eighty two degrees back? Yeah. Katie, can you find for me the sign of 160 degrees to five decimal places, please. I heard 0 0.34202. And of course, that means that if I tell you that the sine of a mystery angle is 0 0.43202, that should absolutely give you that 160 degrees back. Yes? Oh. Does it? No. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. When I go shift sign of 0 0.34202, doesn't give me 160 degrees back. It gives me 20 degrees back. By the way, the reason is, you see, there's two angles that have a sign of 0 0.34202. And as a matter of fact, there's two angles that have a cosine of 0.13. Nine seven, and there's two angles that have a tangent of 0 0.83910. And your calculator, Cassandra, is programmed to only give you the ones between 0 and 90. And it was never an issue in grade 9 because when you were dealing with triangles, your angles were all between 0 and 90, just like the angles also meant they were the reference angles. We didn't need to tell you all of this. And here's what we're going to ask ourselves. What if I tell you that the cosine of theta is 0.456329? There are two angles that have that as a cosine. And my calculator can't tell me the second one. But the cast rule and reference angles can this is what we're going to deal with. We call that a trig equation. When I give you an equation where the variable is an angle, we call that a trig equation, and we're going to start to solve those today. Here's what it says. To solve a trig equation, step one is to determine the quadrants the angle will be in by looking at the sine of the ratio. Actually, what I'd like you to write next to step, step one in capital letters, we're going to use the cast rule. Step, oh, in the heading here it says solving equations involving sine or cosine. The method I'm going to show you works for all of them, which is nice. And it's actually a fairly clean, easy method. So step one, use the cast rule. It's much easier, instead of reading this, they're a little bit verbally expansive, a lot, too much English. It's easier to do it. Example one. The equation they want me to solve is this. Sine of mystery angle equals 0.5. Ah, but they have to add a domain restriction because when I said that there's two angles that have the same sine or cosine? I actually lied. You could keep going around and around and around and around. You could keep finding coterminal angles. There's an infinite number of angles that actually satisfies this equation. So what we're going to do from now on the TS is we're going to give you a domain restriction. And usually it's going to be between 0 and 360. Usually we're going to say, go once around the circle and quit. Every once in a while, Jessica, they'll change the domain. So keep your eyes open. But 99% of the time, once around the circle and quit. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, I said, is write the cast rule. C A S 
G. Jessica, which trig function did they give me in this question? Sine. And according to this question, was my answer positive or negative? Positive. Where is sine positive? What two quadrants? I know that the answer is here or here. Actually, both. Both the answers are in those two quadrants. So I'll draw that. And if this was multiple choice and there was any answers that had angles bigger than 180, I would cross out those answers. That's step one, the cast rule. Step two says find the reference angle. Here's how we're going to find the reference angle. Remember the abbreviation I used last day for reference angle? There's my abbreviation for reference angle, R theta. And that's going to be, on my calculator, the inverse sine of 0.5. When you go inverse sine, shift sine, of 0.5 on your calculator, what do you get? Sorry? Amanda. 30. Amanda, that's telling you the reference angle. That's telling you this angle here and this angle here. Because that's how reference angles were defined. There's going to be two x answers. I'm going to call them x1 and x2. And the first answer starts from the positive x-axis and goes to my first drawing. Andrew, how big does that have to be? One of your answers is 30 degrees. Shannon, my second answer starts here again and goes right to there. How big does that have to be? Well, how big is my reference angle, Shannon? 30. And how far all the way to here? How, uh huh. So if that's 30 and that's 180, how big in your head? Yes? By the way, got your calculators? Can you find the sine of 30? Is it 0.5? Very quickly. Can you find the sine of 150? Is it also 0.5? And that's the only way to find that second answer. Find the reference angle and use the cast rule to figure out what quadrant we're in. Oh, that's what step three is saying. Determine the rotation angles using the reference angles in the quadrant. Lots of writing. Easier to just do. Example 2a. First thing I'm going to do is draw the cast rule. C, A, S, T. It's so which trig function did they give me? Was sine, did the answer work out to be negative or positive? Negative. So where is sine negative? Here and here. Oh, and if this was multiple choice and there was any answers less than 180, I'd cross those out. You, you will find sometimes, Sabrina, on some questions, you may be done. You may notice that there's only one answer that has one angle between 180 and 270 and one angle between 270 and 360. You may notice there's only one. Quit! has to be that. I, I almost always won't give you one like that because that's a bad question in my mind, but every once in a while there's a slip through on the provincial. I need to find the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be the inverse sine of, and here is the key. Here is the key. We already used the negative to figure out where we are. We do not include the negative to find the reference angle. We do not put the negative right there. We find the positive decimal shifted sign. Always. We're not going to use the negative in this one to find the reference angle. We're not going to use the negative in this one to find the reference angle. We're going to use the negative to figure out what quadrant we're in. What is the reference angle for 0 0.8090? Steph? Oh, I thought I heard you say it. Which one? 
53.99 would round off to what, Stephanie? 54. It, it does say to the nearest whole number. So the reference angle is 54 degrees. And Steph, reference angles are always to the x-axis. It's telling me this angle and this angle are 54. Here's the first angle, starting from the positive x-axis right to there. Carson, how can I calculate it? Now, he said 180 plus reference angle. We're going to write that. In your homework, if you want to go straight to the answer, go ahead. In our notes, let's write down that we went 180 plus 54, so that when you're studying, you know what the heck we did. And can you, in your head, go 180 plus 54? I think you can. 234. Carson, the second angle is nope, that big. How could I calculate how big that one is? 360 minus 54. And I even would argue you can do that in your head, Carson. 306. Uh, let's check. Can you half find the cosine of 234? Can you guys try the cosine of 306? And we should get very close to negative 0 0.8090, maybe a bit off because we did some rounding. Is it right? You really should have been done. OK. You guys check. You guys check. Yes, does it work? Anybody? Give me. Actually, you tried it? You actually did try it, or are you just nodding your head, hoping nobody knows that you didn't type it in? Did you try it? No. It's up. Come on. Someone check it. You guys, cos of 306. We need to find out that this works. Yes? A bit off, but yeah. And cos of 234, yes? Is very close to negative 0 0.8092. B. You know what first thing I'm going to do is? Cast rule. C. A. S, T. Shannon, which trig function did it give me in this question? Negative or positive, according to this question? Where is cos negative? Uh, here and here. <coughs> right? Let's find the reference angle. Now, the reference angle is the inverse cosine of not negative 0 0.8090, just 0 0.8090. What do you get for the reference angle? Thirty-six. And again, it's so that's telling us that those two angles are thirty-six degrees because reference angles are always measured to the closest x-axis. Okay. How big is theta 1? How can I calculate it? How can I calculate it? 180 minus 36? I'll do that in my head. Uh, 180 minus 30 is 150. Minus six, 144? Yes? How big is theta 2? Theta 2 is that big. It's going to be 180 plus 36. 216? Also works for tangent. Try this one on your own. I won't freeze the screen. If you get stuck, you can look up. I'll just do this. But see if you can try this one on your own.
no quick and easy way to find both answers without reference angles and cast rule. There are other ways, but this is the second quickest but least memorizing stuff way. It's the best bang for your buck. There is a quicker way you can memorize. There, there's actually formulas where if you know one sine, you can find the other one. If you know one cos, you can find the other cos. If you know one tan, you can find the other tan by subtracting or adding multiples of pi. Yeah. To save one whole second, not worth memorizing three new formulas. How many got that? Okay. Excellent. Now, here's the nice thing. Not only does this work for sine and for cosine and for tangent, this same method with one very minor tweak will work for, turn the page, reciprocal trig functions like cotangent or cosecant. So example three, find the measure of angle A and once again we're between 0 and 360. Cotangent goes with which trig function? This is the same as 1 over tan A equals 0.5. I'm actually not going to teach you how to solve cotangent or cosecant or secant. All I'm going to teach you to do is how to change it into sine or cosine or tangent. Why, why learn something new when I can turn it into what I already know? Now, to solve and tidy this up, I would cross multiply. Don't write this next bit down. I'm going to do this the long way, and then I'm going to show you an easier shortcut that is worth memorizing. So if I cross multiplied, I would get 1 times 1 equals 0.5 times tangent. Yes? And then how would I get the tan by itself? Here is the easier way. If they give you a reciprocal trig function, Matthias, flip this and flip this at the same time. In other words, that's replace it with tangent, replace that with 1 over it. Yeah. What trig function did they give us here? Cosecant goes with what? Sine. Replace this with sine. Replace this with 1 over negative 2.86. That's the quick and easy way. Instead of cross multiplying and three lines later ending up there, I'm saying for what it's worth, flip both sides. If you flip the left side, it becomes a nice trig function. Flip the right side, it just becomes 1 over whatever you have. Easy. That's what we're going to do. So. I'm going to erase this, 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 and this, and I'm going to say, hey, this is really just Now I know 10, uh, sorry, I know 1 over 0.5 is 2. Who cares? Amanda, if it works out evenly, I'll just leave it as a fraction anyways, because most of the time it won't work out evenly, and I'm going to go on my calculator. What trig function did they give me? Cotangent. Ah, not cotangent. What trig function did they really give me? Tangent. Okay, cast rule. C A S T. Roxanne, according to this question, was tangent negative or positive? Positive. What quadrant is tangent positive in? And give me the numbers, because you need to learn the numbers anyways. Sorry? I disagree. Sorry, I partly agree. Yes. Oh. What? Ah, here and here, because there's going to be two answers. Now I'm going to find the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be the inverse tangent of 1 over 0.5. Now it's familiar, right? Same old, same old. Reference angle, 1 over 
63 degrees. Does it say it? Yeah, it says the nearest whole number. Which means that this angle and this angle are 63 degrees. A1 equals A2 equals. Ready, Holly? Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Holly, how far? Oh, that was easy. How will I calculate that one? And I'm going to argue, I think you can do that in your head. You can you can use a calculator if you need, but yeah, I think you can be done. 180 plus 63, 243, yes? Now, the reason I'm encouraging stuff in your head, this first trig test is going to be non-calc. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. How will we do that step? We're using a. I will be eventually showing you a way that we can do certain angles without a calculator and even going backwards. So, but, so I am encouraging you to be able to. I, I think it's fair game to expect you to go 180 plus 63 degrees without a calculator successfully. If you can't, suck it up. B. B. Ragji, what trig function did they give me in B really, not cosecant? What did they really give me? I'm going to replace cosecant with sine and flip the other side. And now it's a question that we've done before. Cast rule. By the way, the most common mistake, Roxanne, kids remember to flip this side. They forget to flip this side. And now you've completely changed the question. Now you're saying sine A equals that. No, 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 no. It was cosecant equals flip both sides. Ragjeet, what quadrants are we in? According to this question, is sine negative or positive? What quadrants are we in? Right? 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 Yeah? Good. Take it the rest of the way, folks. I'll do it quietly here. Remember, don't include the negative in your reference angle. I even checked my answer. The cosecant, 1 divided by sine of 340 degrees, two point, negative 2.92, pretty close to that. I figured we'd be a bit off because it's not exactly 20 degrees. It's almost 20 and a half degrees. That's about as big an error as we'll get. By the way, what if you put the negative in there? You get weird stuff. For example, if you went inverse sine of 1 over negative 2.86, you get a negative reference angle, which this time matches that decimal, but it won't always, and reference angles aren't supposed to be negative. Uh, we use the negative here to figure out what quadrant we're in. We don't use it here to figure out the reference angle. Time for the curveballs. Where does this method no longer work? This will work for any angle on the planet except when this number here is a zero, a plus or minus one, 
or an undefined. Then the bets are off. Usually, Ashley, what that means is your answer is either this or this or this or this. You're right on one of the four axes, and those don't really have proper reference angles, like the question you asked me earlier today. The system breaks down. Example four. Cassandra, can you read 4a to me, please? Yeah, okay, we're going to say theta from now on, right? Yeah, get used to that. Cosecant theta is undefined. This is one of the curveballs. Or if it had said cosecant theta is zero, that would be a curveball. Or if it said cosecant theta is one or negative one, okay, our cast rule no longer is going to work. Instead, we're going to have to fall back on x and y and r. And so I say to you, cosecant, in terms of x and y and r, is 1 over 1. Cosecant is what over what? Sorry, I heard it here. Amanda! What this question is really saying is R over Y is undefined. That fraction is undefined. What makes a fraction undefined? divide by zero. If they're telling me that cosecant was undefined, what do three dots mean? Therefore, they're telling me that that was true. So we put that little chain of reasoning together. We're still going to sketch. But I'm going to draw a little dotted line circle. That's the arm swinging its way around. What angle or angles, as you're swinging around, will have a y value of 0? Now, your y value is how high you are. What you're really saying is, as my arm is swinging around, when is my arm zero high? Here, which is what? How many degrees? Here, and You can't find that with reference angles and the cast rule because there are no real good reference angles there. Oh, and besides, how the heck would you type in undefined into your calculator to find the reference angle in the first place? Doesn't really work. B. Cos theta is zero. Cos theta equals what? Well, oh, the alarm bell is going to go off now in this unit when you have a trig equation and the answer works out to a zero or a plus or minus one or an undefined. Shannon, your little heart should start racing and you should be saying to yourself, oh, Mr. Duick says cast rule is not going to work. I've got to go y, r, and x. And so, Shannon, now that you've calmed down, I say to you, cosine is what over what in terms of x and y and r? It is, and I want that with more authority and confidence in your voice next time. What this question is saying, Shannon, is x over r equals 0. 
it's saying this fraction worked out to 0. What would make that fraction work out to 0? It's when the top is 0. If a fraction equals 0, the top is 0. If a fraction is undefined, the bottom is 0. Right, what's on the top here? Ah! Therefore, x equals 0. Once again, we can do a little sketch. We can imagine Mr. Duick's arm swinging around in a circle. And the answers to this question are where my arm has an x-coordinate of 0. At here, yes? Here? No. Ah, here. What two angles? 90 and 270. C. Okay, what's weird about C? Squared. Now, first of all, put your pencils down, look up. I have to show you some notation. If I write this, I don't know whether I'm supposed to go 10 squared sine of 100 or sine of 10, get a decimal and square that. So as mathematicians, a long time ago, we said, if you mean the sine of 10 times the sine of 10, put the squared there, and I'll know you're telling me to square the actual sine decimal. If you mean the sine of 10 times 10, put the squared there. Okay? Problem. If I try typing that on my graphing calculator, I get an error. The only way to type it on your graphing calculator is to type this left-hand version, is to actually go, oh, if they want me to go sine squared, I've got to go sine 10, sine 10, because multiplying it by itself, that is squared. Sorry. So when this says sine squared, this is the same as an equation like this. A squared equals 1 half. What kind of an equation is this? And how do I know? Quadratic, how do I know? got a squared. Now, normally I'd make a quadratic equal to zero, although no, 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 we didn't do that for every single quadratic. If we just had a squared term, we took a shortcut, we got rid of the squared. How? Square root both sides. What's the square root? What's the square root of a squared? What's the square root of sine squared? What's the square root of 1 half? It's not this. I have to remember something from now on. Whenever I square root both sides, what did I have to remember? I heard it. Because when you square root both sides here, the answer is actually either positive one half, square root of one half, or it could have been negative one square root of one half. We didn't know. Who's in physics with me? In physics, we square both we square root all the time. We ignore this, but that's because almost always it's a t squared. Can I have a negative time? 
Well, Einstein said... That we Shut up. Can I have a negative... T no, so we just we ignore that. Although, in Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad, there was at least once this year where we square rooted Vf, and we said, oh, it's going down. We want the negative answer, not the positive answer. We actually did want that one, and we rejected the positive one. So in physics, we're in context there. Here, because I don't know where these numbers ever come from, I have to assume plus or minus. Steph, which trig function did they give me? Sine. And according to this question, sine can be positive or sine can also be what? How many answers am I looking for? Four. Now, actually, that kind of makes sense because a normal quadratic gave me two answers. A trig quadratic, which already gives me two answers, a trig quadratic should give me four answers. Actually, that, that, that kind of, there's some nice symmetry there. Because a, a normal trig was already giving me two, yes? So I think a quadratic trig should give me four. Reference angle. The inverse sine of the square root of a half, or 0.5. And I think this one actually works out bang even. I have memorized a few angles. I think this one's 45, yeah? So what we were saying is this angle is 45, this angle is 45, this angle is 45, and this angle is 45. Ready, Sabrina? There's my first angle. How big is? Theta 1, 45. There's my second angle. How big is theta 2? One thirty-five. Yes, yes, yes. How big is theta 3? How will I calculate it? 180 plus 45, which everyone knows is 225. And Sabrina, theta 4, this one I will make you actually figure out yourself. I think it's 360 minus 45, which is 315, absolutely. Quadratic tricks. Now, next unit... We're actually going to spend like four days looking at quadratic trig equations, but the yucky ones that you have to factor are quadratic formula. Here, we're just going to give you a quadratic that only has a squared term. It doesn't have a non-squared term, so you don't need to make it equal to zero. You just square root both sides. That's application of number one of the cast rule and reference angles. We can solve trig equations. Yeah. Uh, Carson said, I think I noticed a pattern. I noticed I add 90 to each one to get the next one. Uh, it will always be that if it's a quadratic sine equation with a one-half as your answer. It's the fact that our reference angle is 45 degrees. Otherwise, we can't use that trick every time. I wouldn't even bother memorizing it. I left that obscure one. It's only going to come up once in a while. Before. Turn the page. Three more and we're done. Katie, not only can we use reference angles in the cast rule to solve trig equations with, I would say, a fair bit of writing, but not that much having to think. It's a nice little algorithm. Just be careful, Holly. Follow all the steps, and it seems to take care of itself. We can also use it to find exact values, like example 5. It says, given that the point negative 3, 2 lies on the terminal arm of theta, Find the values of the primary and reciprocal trig functions. In other words, they want me to find sine theta, cos theta, tan theta. Those are the primary trig functions. Oh, they also want the reciprocal trig functions. Which one goes with sine? Cosecant theta. 
which one goes with cos secant theta oh yeah and cotangent goes with tangent all right I wrote that down it's no longer blank but TS I feel better even though I haven't really started the question at least I've hey I've written something down what did they give me in this question Matthias what did they tell me a point what is the point that they gave me? No, no, what's the point that they gave me? What's the point that they gave me? What, comma, what? X is negative 3, Y is 2. They gave me this point right here, and they told me the arm goes through that point. Yes? Now, I'm going to say that same thing differently. What I said to you out loud was x is negative 3, y is 2, and it goes through there. I'm going to say it this way by writing it, but instead of is, I'm going to use an equal sign. Matthias, what's x? What's y? It would be wonderful if I could also use that to find r. It would be neat if there was some kind of an equation that related x and y and r together. Ah. In fact, I think this, Amanda, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared which is going to be the square root of 9 plus 4. You're really reaching for a calculator? What is 9 plus 4? And they did say exact values, which means they don't want a decimal. They want that root 13. Uh, by the way, Andrew? Technically, r should be plus or minus the square root of that, but it's a radius. Isn't the length, by definition, always positive? So once again, we've taken this number in context and ignored the negative that is implied. All right. Do I know x? Do I know y? Check. Do I know r? Check. Well, then, sine is what over what? More specific in this case, sine is what over what? And cosecant will be root 13 over 2. Cosine is what over what? x over r. In this case, negative 3 over root 13. And secant will be root 13 over 3. Don't put the negative on the bottom. A negative in a fraction belongs on the top or in front. It's just good math matters. Tangent is y over x. 2 over 3, negative. Cotangent is negative 3 over 2. Try that again. Negative 3 over 2. By the way, what's positive in this quadrant? Sine and cosecant? Are they? Everything else should be negative, is it? Oh, I got a little error check to make sure I haven't made a mistake kind of built in. Skip six, example seven. I like example seven. I like example seven. Number seven is a nice question. If the tangent of theta is that, and secant is positive, find, Jessica, what are they asking me to find?
and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Y over R question. What did they give me? Tangent. By the way, tangent is what over what? What they really told me was this. Oh, except Andrew, one of these must have been negative. Which one? Let's find out, shall we? Tangent, according to this question, Andrew, negative or positive? Which means I'm either here or here. And secant, according to this question, what? Positive. I don't have a rule for secant. What does secant go with? Cosine. This is really saying that cos is positive. So where is tangent negative and cosine positive? Well, cos is positive here and here. Where's the overlap, Holly? If I'm down here, is my x positive or is my y positive? Where did this negative come from? I'll give you a hint. Listen to what I say. If I'm down here, y is negative, isn't it? That negative there, because I didn't know who it belonged to, came from there. Which means sine is going to be negative 3 over. Over, oh, oh, do I know x? Do I know y? Amanda, is there some lovely equation that relates x and y and r together? Really? What? Or as I like to say, r is just the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is the square root of 2 root 5 squared plus negative 3 squared. Ah, and it relax. Let's do the easy part first. Steph, what's negative 3 squared? Now, what's really bugging you, I'm guessing, is this. This is actually nice and easy to do. You know how I do it? Steph, what's 2 squared? What's root 5 squared? Root 5 times root 5 is just what? Not 20. It would be root 25, which is what? Five. Okay, right, so ready? See one, act one, take two. What's two squared? Say it nice and loud. What's root five squared? Just plain old. It's a four times a five. Because it's two times root five. All squared is going to be two squared times root five squared. It's four times five. In fact, in my head, no calculator required. What is R? What is 20 plus nine? And R is root 29. Think about what we've just done. We don't know the angle, yet we were able to find, and they could have asked us any trig function. We could have found, in fact, we did find any trig function one question ago. We're finding all of the trig values as exact values, even though we don't know the angle. We need to practice this. I unfortunately need to give you lots of practice on this. 1 all, 2 all, 3 all, 4 all, 5 all, Derek, yes, 6 all, Mr. Derek, 7 all, I'm going to skip 8, oh, Mr. Derek, you are so kind, 9. So, 1 to 7, 9. You have the remainder of class, my children. Hopefully that made sense to you, though.